On this episode of Turn and Rust, we're going to attempt to revive what's left of this Volkswagen bus. <laughs> Join in and follow along as they continue their quest of saving rusty relics, giving the past a future while serving God and building rods. Here at Turn and Rust, brought to you in part by Maxed Trailers. Hey guys, real quick before the video gets started, uh, we want to mention a company we've hooked up with called Cove that recently sent us this really cool Bluetooth speaker. If you've never heard of Cove, they're an audio company that specializes in a lot of mobile Bluetooth devices, including headphones, speakers, and just anything audio. They've hooked us up with this Commuter 2 model, which is really cool to have around the shop. Uh, one thing I love about it is just within seconds, you're able to hook it up to your phone and listen to whatever kind of music you'd like to hear. One thing about this little dude is it's very durable and to top that off, even water resistant. So when things get not that careful around the shop, this thing's gonna keep on purring. Another cool perk is it has an over five hour battery life. So if you're in the middle of the project, you're not gonna have to worry about losing your sound before you get done with it. To top everything off, probably one of my favorite things about this commuter too, is the fact that it'll actually break into two systems so me and dad can both enjoy the music wherever we may be. Just to show you guys how loud this little thing is, it is extremely loud when it's pieced together. But the really cool thing about it is, once you split it apart, it doesn't really seem to change the sound quality at all. So now Dan can listen to music over there, enjoy it. I can go to the other side of the shop, enjoy it just as well, and it really gives it a 360 sound effect to make you enjoy the day. How's it sound? Sounds good. Anytime we do any kind of sponsorships around the shop, it most definitely helps us to move forward on other ongoing projects. So big shout out to Cove Audio for supporting our channel and giving you guys a 60% off discount on this speaker. Uh, typically this Commuter 2 is going to run you around $200. With that 60% off, you're only looking at around $65. Bucks. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, be sure to go to their website at coveaudio.com, uh, punch in that coupon code TR60 to receive your 60% off. Keep in mind, this is for a limited time only, so if you're interested in something like this, you better move fast. With that being said, we hope you enjoy the show. Thank you for all the support. Just a dream, best I've never seen. Playing on the greatest team, just I, myself, and me. I got that new thing, new style, new walk. I got that new vibe, new drip, new talk. Everyone knows that we're huge Volkswagen fans around the shop. It's not very often that we get the chance to purchase a Volkswagen bus, or in this case, half of one. We bought this 1975 Volkswagen bus from a friend of ours who had found it down around Houston. We ended up purchasing this cool little van just sight unseen, and fortunately she was willing and able to come down to our car show to deliver it to us. When I first laid eyes on it, I couldn't help but to smile, and I believe that you would agree with me, this has to be the most funkiest thing we've had around the shop yet. If the short wheelbase is not enough to grab your attention, you're definitely going to notice this crazy artwork that was supposedly done by a well-known artist out of Houston as well. We've had this old girl on the back burner around the shop here for quite some time now, and the story is that she will run, but it's just unknown of how long it's been since she's been on the road. Uh, we're going to dig into her now, see if we can get her fire up. I definitely want to get this thing on the road and see what kind of looks we can get. A lot of times we get these old vehicles in, uh, we don't know what's wrong with them, so the first thing we do is start checking the, the fluids, the, check the oil, check the water, of course it's air cooled, we don't have to worry about that. A lot of times these old vehicles are parked for a reason, uh, most of the time we, we find out it's, it's something to do with the engine, uh, but if we can get this thing going by the end of the day, you know, it's, it's going to increase the value of this thing by a lot. Well, what do you think on it? Uh, I don't know yet, I think it's groovy. <laughs> I'm going to say that's not the original motor there. There's a lot of empty space in there. Yeah, right there's there. a lot, and it's way back up in there. It's not. not yeah, back that's in the kind of, that's an early motor. That's. Yeah, that just has the, just the single port heads even yeah. on it. Yep. Yeah, this thing would have had a lot, 
a lot newer of a motor in it, but got oil in it? Yeah, got oil. It's it's not completely full, but it's close enough. I'm gonna add a little bit in it. Turns over, Turns huh? Turns over, yeah. I think I got it in We got it in gear. Yeah. We want to knock it out of gear. I got a battery here. I don't know All what right. kind of post it was looking like it took. Top post, huh? Yep. I figure go ahead and try to hook this battery up on it and see if we can we can turn it over. Uh, doesn't look too, I mean, a little grime to it, but I mean, that's to be expected. I'm kind of kind of shocked that, you know, maybe they went through it before they put it in or knew it was a good motor or something. But right. A little rigging here and there on their exhaust work. But put that battery on it and see if we can get it to turn over, put a little gas in it. Heck, this may not even, I don't know if it's got points or electronic ignition. Right. I don't think it's going to be too hard to get it up and running. I just want to see her down the road and put some smiles uh, on yeah. some faces. Besides our own? Yeah. We'll try to get this up in there if we can. And I'll go knock it out of gear before I forget about okay. it. Should be a neutral now. Ain't much of a battery tray, is it? Oh, no. I think it's gonna work. I don't know. It's. Nothing. I want the tip to the back. Might be easier for you. I'm working kind of backhanded there, so. Yeah, I'll try to reach at it. <laughs> I'm assuming you did have the battery <laughs> in the right position, it, right? It looked that way. It's not sparking everywhere. <laughs> I think that's got it. Um, do we need to add any oil or you think it's good? No, gone? that's plenty. It's, it's good? It's just barely, barely below the mark. I guess I'll go up there and try to Bump see if over. it turns over here. Yeah. We may have to tighten them ends up just a little right. bit because they're not very tight. But I'll see what she does real quick. We're starting to dig into this thing and you can tell that the original motor has been replaced at some point in its life. Uh, it's got an early air cool, just a six, looks like a 1600, just a single port engine, like would have been in a Beetle or something like that. Uh, we put a battery on it, check the fluids, oil looks good. Uh, so now we, we, we actually had keys to this car, so we're going to try to turn it over, see if it'll uh, turn over the block. If it turns over, we're getting spark, we're getting gas, she's going to run. You're just going to bump it? Yeah, I'm just going to try to turn it over a little bit. Okay. We should be out of gear. You ready? Yeah. Nothing. I got dash lights, but... So we got... I hear something clicking. I wonder if that solenoid... Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I, I can hear something clicking, but I don't... Huh. Yeah, we got uh, we got dash lights and everything, but yeah, like I said, I can hear it. just click. It sounds like somewhere right in here, but oh yeah, I don't know where the starter should be back over there, in that back behind the motor there. Might be able to grab a little hammer and smack on it a little bit. I bet it's just from setting up that solenoids probably. Be. Uh, that'd be a good easy first first try at it right. anyways. I'll go grab a hammer and we'll kind of smack on it just right. a little bit. If that don't work, we'll. Possibly have to look at that starter and make sure we got okay. a good one. Let me grab a light. There you go. We're just going to try to hammer on the starter just a little bit. Uh, a lot of times from them just sitting in one spot for a long time, they'll kind of get freezed up and gummed up. Uh, so hopefully it'll allow the starter to turn over now. We've got dash lights. We're getting power to everything. We just need the starter to cooperate. I'm going to go ahead and give it another shot. You ready? I'm ready. Nothing. Nothing. Huh. Maybe we're not getting a good uh, maybe we're not getting a good connection down there onto it from the battery here. Pretty pretty tight. I still hear whatever it is it's clicking's up that direction though, but it must be something on that. Yeah, it's probably something fuel. just on the ignition system. Oh yeah, the fuel. 
trying but I'm not hearing any clicking on the on the starter. Yeah. Uh, trying to trace it back there. So that's the. That's it right there. Huh. It's got a pretty good bite on that battery now. We go ahead and give it another shot real quick. Okay. Here we go. All right. No. Can we just jump it across at the solenoid there? Can you see where the wire? I can see where it comes. We may have a bad wire that's running up to the ignition switch. All right. Yeah, I see a wire that's got tape on yeah, it. Yeah, there's right one there. that's got tape on it. That's going to be what runs back to the ignition switch. Right there? Yeah, that's what's going to yeah, kick the solenoid in and out. Ready? It runs to a second, or just a separate terminal there, right? Yeah, it runs to its own You want to mess with uh, that splice? Is it spliced? It's, it's, it's kind of like a butt splice thing. It's got a male and a female clipped together. All right, you might just try to mess with that and I'll, I can turn it over again. Okay. Let me try it? Yeah, because it feels loose in there. Okay, I'll try it. Here we go. No. No. Nope. Nothing. Alrighty. You think maybe we could try to jump that thing across on the solenoid just to see if, see what it tries to do? Yeah, I can try it see, see what it does. That way we know there's no wiring issues. We, we're jumping it straight across at the, at the starter. So right. if it's going to work, it should work. Alright. Will you give it a try? Yeah, go for it. Oops. I hear it. It ain't turning nothing over though. No. It's not engaging. Uh uh. Let me see if I can give it a little tap here on the back just real quick. So we do know that we've got some kind of a wiring issue though. Yeah. Well, we've got that, that extra solenoid on there, it looks like, so I don't know what that's all about, but. No. No. Try it one more time before we. <laughs> I think we have to pull that starter off. Yep. Yeah, that Bendix is not. See if we can pull it off and get it working. If not, we'll order another starter and get it popped on there. That one just doesn't sound healthy enough to it yep. get us anywhere today. Well, it looks like issue number one on this vehicle is just going to be a starter problem we're having here. Uh, we're not getting anything with the key when I try to turn it over. Dad was able to just jump it across at the solenoid. It is trying to spin over, but it's just not engaging on the flywheel and turning over the motor here. Uh, so we're going to get it off where we can play with it, see it a little bit better. These things are pretty easy to get pulled off. We'll, we'll mess with it outside of the truck here. Once we get it up and working, if we can, uh, we'll pop it back on there. It should turn over and we'll move on to problem number two. Now that we got this starter off the truck where we can actually see it a little bit better, uh, kind of a strange setup to me. I've never really seen something like a, a solenoid on top of a solenoid here. So I'm not exactly sure what they had going on here. I'm pretty sure our problem is going to be right here with this solenoid we've got. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is just bypass that solenoid. We'll just run straight to this solenoid. We'll jump it across from this terminal to this wire right here. And it's either going to just spin or this part will kick out and spin the way we need it to. And that'll kind of let us know what the issue may be. We're just going to remove this wire right here that ran to this extra solenoid and jump it across right here. It should kick over the way we want it to. Should be able to just jump it across right here at this solenoid. It should kick everything out there and, and turn over the way we need it to. In a perfect world. It's not getting anything out of her. It will turn over by hand just a little bit. 
uh, but something inside there, probably the brushes or whatever makes that thing spin is not, uh, not allowing it to kick out and spin the way it needs to. She's just not working, is she? No, you can see it bind up, but it's not. Well, the cool thing about old Volkswagens is a lot of the parts are interchangeable. A lot of these ran the same starter. Uh, having a lot of Volkswagens coming in and out of the shop, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have an extra starter that we can pop on this. Uh, we could tear into this one, keep working with it. It's probably just going to give us more problems in the future. So we're just going to grab another starter, pop it on there, and hopefully that'll fix its problem. We've got another starter here. Uh, it's been around the shop. We took it off of another vehicle at one time or another. It does work. It is a good starter. It will get us away from this old starter and get rid of this solenoid, which is possibly another problem that's going to haunt us later on. Uh, we'll, we'll mount this up, get us on down the road. Got it. Got it all done? Yep. We should be good to go now. Go ahead and connect that battery back up. Give her a shot. I think it should be giving, working in our favor now. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Nothing still. Still nothing. Uh, let me crawl back up underneath it and see if I can cross it over. Yeah, we may have wiring issues. We're just gonna jump the starter across right there at the solenoid. Uh, I'm almost 100% certain that that was a good starter. I'm pretty sure we pulled it off of a working motor in the past. Uh, I could be wrong, been wrong before, uh, but if that works and we know that the starter was fixed in that issue, uh, now we're just gonna have to chase down a wiring problem. You got it out of gear? Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're gonna try it. All right. Uh-oh. I got power. Yeah. She's turning over. I'll go ahead and turn it over a little more, let that oil pump up in there. All right, here we go. All right. All right, that's good. I knew that was a good <laughs> starter. I definitely started second guessing myself, though. Yeah, well, I thought it was too, so yeah. yeah. luckily we both Well, the only bad problem, though, is obviously we still got some kind of a wiring issue we're gonna have to chase down, but right. we've made one step closer, that's for sure. Kind of chase those down, figure out why we ain't getting power to that, and we'll get her running. Yep. She's just being a little contrary, like <laughs> most Volkswagens are. <laughs> We've chased around wires on this fan, and uh, unfortunately, that's never a fun job to do. Uh, there, were, there was a large splice section where you could tell when they chopped this van down, they took about uh, three or four foot out of the center of it. So where they spliced all those wires back together, it's a little bit of a mess. We thought we had found the problem there, but it didn't seem to fix anything. Um, one cool thing about this bus when we bought it is she had the keys to it. Uh, the uncool thing about it is the ignition switch is absolutely no good. Uh, so I pulled the wires here right down on the ignition switch. When I bump it across right back here, she turns over just like she should. So uh, we're fighting a bad ignition switch as well. And looks like we're just going to have to hot wire this girl too. Well, I'm glad we got that figured out. Yeah, me too. Be a light nightmare sometimes. Yep. I guess we're at the point of trying to See, we're at least turning over so we can try to crank it up. All right. Uh, I don't know if we should maybe pull, pull this fuel line off here. So if it does run, we're not pumping a bunch of old right. nasty gas because you know it's probably old. Right. And I don't know on this. I don't know if it's going to have, I'm hoping it's got, you know, electronic ignition, but it may have points still. Cap looks pretty good. Button. Ugh. Yeah, that's going to be electronic ignition. That's I guess good. I should have known from that right there. So I don't think we're going to have to be fighting, uh, you know, points fire. and stuff. Yeah, fire. As long as the plugs ain't all rusted up. Get that back the way it goes. There we go. She may crank up pretty easy. It may right. be that this, the starter was the only thing. Well, Maybe, yeah. And ignition switch. And ignition switch. <laughs> But that stuff can just mess up over time, too, from sitting. Yep. So. 
my starter freezes up sometimes after I've been sitting. <laughs> it's hard to get you to start. <laughs> we'll go ahead and take that line out there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Use pull, two hands. We'll pull that loose. Let me go ahead and get a little bit of gas we can pour down in that carburetor. Alrighty. If it tries to crank up, we'll just, you know, either run our little temporary tank to that fuel pump, let it pump in there, and we can also see what kind of fuel we've got in that tank, if there's any at all. Right. I think it's not want to turn loose. I'm going to go grab some okay. gas. Now that we got this motor turning over the way it needs to be, we, we've just let it run over just to pump oil everywhere into the valves and all that stuff. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just add a little gas now. I will have to jump some wires across at the ignition switch where it's messed up just so we get power to our cool, uh, which is gonna send it to the distributor, to the plug wires, to the plugs. Uh, so once we have gas, once we have fire to the plugs, and a little bit of air, some compression, she should fire up and sound for us. Right. With us having a faulty ignition switch that we're having a mess with, uh, we're basically just looking for two wires to fire this uh, bus up and have it running. Uh, there's going to be some wires that run your headlights, a lot of accessories on here. We're not worried about that. We need, we, we need juice to our starter, which is going to allow the motor to turn over, and we also need juice to our cool, uh, which is going to allow the spark. So I've just got two wires right here. I'll jump one across that's going to send pow uh, power to our cool to get fire on everything, and then I'll leave it connected. And I'll just tap across the one to the starter, so once it cranks up, I can let off that wire. Should be the ignition wire there. And then we'll just run this one over to the starter. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Alrighty. Give her another little drink. Okay. Here we go. Come on. Think it's getting enough gas? Tender. Yeah, it's got plenty of gas in it. It does? Yeah. All right, we may not be getting fire. I'll try it one more time. Okay. Come on. Come on, no. girl. Acts like it's not getting fire, huh? Yeah, I know it. Might have to check the plugs. I feel like it ain't getting no fire. We yeah. need to check it there at that cool and see if we've got any juice. I'm pretty sure I'm on the right wire up there at the switch, but you got a test line? Yeah. Yeah, you can check it with that. Let me go hook that wire back up and okay. it should should have juice to it. All right, getting anything? Yeah. So we're getting juice to it. Huh, we may have a bad coil then. Let's, uh, let's pull the wire off and see if we're getting spark uh, down to the plugs, I guess. Could be even bad. Something or another on that ignition. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna check it there at the plug. We can. Feels like a five eighths. Oh, you want to pull the plug out? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do. That'd be just as easy to do this way. All I gotta do is stick my tongue to it. <laughs> you wanna try it that way? Yeah, I'll just try it that way. All right, I'll go turn it over. All righty. I'll listen for your holler. I'll know if we're getting fire. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Nothing? Nothing. You sure? I heard a, a pop, but I didn't see any sparks. I mean, I heard a poop. Yeah, it sounded like it tried to crank. Yeah. Maybe I just don't have a good ground here. Try it again. Ready? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Getting yeah. a spark now? Yeah, yeah, we're getting a good spark. Well, I guess hook it back up. We'll give it a little bit more gas. I may not have had a good connection on that wire up there or something. Hopefully. Come Alrighty. on, girl. You know you want to run. They always want to run. <laughs> Try it again, you think? I think so. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little dose. That way she can have a running start before you get up there. Uh, try it out. Here we go. Alrighty. Uh oh. Okay. Try it again. Ready? Yep. Come on, girl. I think I'm losing my connection up here on this wiring. Alrighty. I ain't got it spliced together the best. <laughs> Try it again. Try it again. You got some more gas in it? Yeah. Here we go. Come on. Man, she's so close. Really close. Here we go. All right. Man, it's so close. Yep. You reckon those plugs need to be pulled out and cleaned? It could be. <laughs> we're trying yep. to jump the gun on everything. We know we're getting fire to the wires, though. Right. So yep. You said it was getting a good spark yeah, there, right? Yeah, a really right? good spark. Yeah, right across so here. So if them, uh, if them spark plugs are fouled out, that's going to keep us from it running like it needs to. Right. Because we know we're getting gas. We're pulling it straight into the carburetor. Right. So I think we're just not getting quite the clean fire that we need to make it work. Or it could be a it could be a weak coil that's kind of giving us issues. True. Yeah. I say let's clean them plugs, uh, pull them out, clean them up, check them while we got them out, and then we'll bounce back to that coil if it still gives us issues. All right. We're not going to give up on her that easy. She's right on the verge of cranking up, uh, but just not at the point of running yet. Uh, we know we're getting fired down to the spark plugs, uh, but if them spark plugs aren't sparking, uh, then we're just going to be here all day long turning it over just right there on the verge. A lot of the times these old plugs will get built up with carbon or oil or whatever it may be. Uh, they're pretty simple to get at, so we'll pull them out. If that's an issue, we'll get that fixed. If not, we'll just move on to the next problem. cool thing about these old Volkswagens that I've always liked is everything is extremely easy to get at. Now this one being a uh, an earlier motor in this, it's setting back a little farther than normal, but still, I mean you can get right at everything really simple. Once we get them out, we can check, see what they look like. That'll kind of tell us a lot more what we're working with. Oh yeah, and them things are terrible. They've got so much carbon built up on them. I would highly doubt that we're getting any kind of spark out of them right now. So that's a good sign. We'll get these cleaned up. Uh, I highly doubt we're getting any spark out of them. If we are, it's not gonna be very consistent. Once we clean them up, pop them back in there, I think we'll be getting the fire we need to be. What we're going to do here is just take these spark plugs and just clean up the tip of them with this wire wheel on a drill here. Uh, you can tell these plugs aren't very old. Uh, they've just been built up with a lot of mess for some reason. So we don't know if we have some other issues that may be going on with the motor once it does get up and running. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to clean it off. It'll, it'll clean it back down to a, a good clean metal where it allows the spark to work right. It doesn't take much to knock this old grime off here. Uh, 
But as long as it's on there, they're not going to be performing the way they need to be. And once we get them cleaned off, they should be doing a whole lot hotter of a spark. Now that we got them all cleaned up, they cleaned up pretty well, uh, we're going to put them back in here and just test our fire then. Uh, hopefully she'll crank up and run. If not, we'll move on to that cool. It's all about playing doctor on these old vehicles. You never really know what you're getting into until you uh, dig in a little deeper with them and uh, just keep diagnosing it. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully this will this will help the symptoms we're having and uh, make her a little healthier than what she was before. This is, old motor is going to be uh, just an old, what they call a single port head. Uh, you know, I think I've, earlier I'd stated it as probably a 1600, but uh, to be honest with you, it may even be smaller than that. Uh, but this was kind of one of their more earlier designs. And of course, you know, Volkswagens, uh, the early Volkswagens were known for their uh, being air cooled, so you never have to worry about you know radiator issues or water issues or anything like that. Uh, so that's a whole lot of a less of a problem, a headache you got to mess with later on on anything to do with water cooling it. All right, I guess we'll give her a shot. So at the beginning of the day, we basically fought a, a faulty starter. We found an old used starter we had around the shop, popped it on there, uh, still no luck with it. Uh, then we had to chase down some what we thought were some bad wirings. It was able to turn it over just jumping across at the solenoid and found a faulty ignition switch. Uh, now we're at where we're turning the bus over. It's turning over good and it's trying to crank, but it just doesn't act like it's getting the fire it needs to. Uh, so we pulled the plugs out. They were super nasty, got them cleaned up. Hopefully we'll try it out now and she'll run. You ready dad? I'm ready. All right here we go. All right. <laughs> there she is. Amazing what some spark plugs will do. <laughs> It's amazing what some clean spark will do, huh? Yeah, yeah, a lot. We just weren't getting any fire out of them spark plugs, apparently. Right. It sounds pretty good. Yeah. Any smoke or anything? A little bit, I mean, just poof. Just I mean, a little bit yeah. from setting up, probably. Well, heck. Not, not near what it should have been. Was I you think. keeping gas poured yeah, in Yeah, I was it? having to pour yeah. a little bit of gas in, so. We can probably just try to keep feeding it a little gas and hook this, uh, hook this gas tank back up and see what our fuel looks like. I don't know. Like I said, don't really know how long it's been sitting, so that old fuel may be pretty, pretty it nasty be, on yeah. it. Worst case scenario, that looks like a perfect little yeah. cubby hole for our tank. We can just run right to the fuel pump if it's good, and if not, yeah, we'd have to try to gravity feed it up in here, maybe down to it. But right, you know, it's yeah. kind of strange that tank's up over there. It almost seems like it would gravity yeah. feed itself yeah, anyway. So. Well, yeah, pretty close, anyways. Yeah, if you had a full tank. I'm going to go grab some gas and put in there and see if it even, it may not have a drop in it and it may we all pour, yeah. <laughs> it may pour out in the bottom. Yep. Let's go grab some gas and get that in there and like I said, you can just keep it running. If it pumps out, pumps looks out. okay. Right. Heck, we'll hook it up and move her down the road. Yeah. Well, it looks like we officially got a runner. She sounds pretty good. Dad said she puffed out a little smoke just there at the beginning, and that's to be expected. Uh, we're going to try to get a little fuel in this tank. Hopefully, it'll allow us to pump it into there. Uh, if this fuel tank's any good, and we can get gas to that fuel pump, and it feeds it to that carburetor, we're going to be heading down the road before we know it. How are we looking? Uh, everything seems to be okay. Uh, wait, it's you're right. It's starting to overflow like... They're leaking out the yep. tank? Yeah, it's coming over, yep. 
It's coming through the filters and everything. Oh, it's coming out of the line. Yeah, coming out the line. Yeah. So it did just kind of gravity feed itself yeah. down there. How's it look? Uh, Probably nice, it's, you know? It's a little darker than the other, but I mean, it, it doesn't look trashy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I see that got a filter on it there. Yeah, actually two of them. I see another one back up in there, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell it's a little old gas. Yeah. Uh, ain't no trash in it, though. No, the filter doesn't even look bad. I'd say let's go ahead and just hook it back up there and uh, let it pump into the carburetor and just use this tank. Uh, you know, it'd be different if it was a bunch of trash and stuff. Yeah, what's this? Got, I see another filter up in there, so I mean, I, don't, I can't tell anything about it. It, but probably sure didn't have much, it probably didn't have much gas in it anyway. Right. Yeah, we'll hook that back up and try it out. And hopefully the fuel pump even works. We don't know about that yet, but let's hook it up and see if it'll feed the carburetor, I guess. Okay. All right, we're about to hook this old fuel line back up to the pump here uh, so that we can get this gas tank hooked back up and let this thing run on its, its own tank and that. So hopefully we won't have any issues with this fuel pump. Uh, seems like every time we figure we're just about to get going on this thing, it'll, it'll give us an issue, but Hopefully this one won't be one. Okay, Lance, I'm getting pretty close. I just about got it tied in. And we're done. You out of the way? Yeah, I'm clear. Here we go. Come on, girl. You may have to give her a little drink. I gave her a little bit, but okay. Here we go. Come on. Try it again. I'm assuming it's pumping. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think it was at first. I guess we had flooded it a little bit. Purring like a kitten. Yep. That's probably one of the quietest Volkswagen motors yeah, yeah, I've ever so. heard. <laughs> kind of peppered my arm a little bit, but it's... How'd it get you? Yeah. A little, little sandblasting. <laughs> She's running enough, yeah. good enough to move her down the road, though. What do you think? I think so. I think them, that running a little rich was kind of from the 70s. You know, they, they like that. <laughs> yeah. Guess we need to figure out if it'll go in gear. Yeah, that's true. I'll try it out real quick, see if that clutch pedal feels good. All right, I'm going to get out of your way. Yeah. The least going in gear. See if it moves. Oh yeah. <laughs> so far so good. Try backwards. backwards. Oh yeah. Brakes. Wow, brakes. <laughs> the brakes work. Yeah, you got brake lights too, so. The stinking brakes are working. Yeah. Well, I've seen the brake lights come on. So oh, yeah. they're working? Yeah, the brake lights working. <laughs> Oh, this one's definitely ready for the road. California, here we come. I'll say let's get it out and give her a shot. See what kind of looks we can get. You want to ride with me? Yeah. Yeah, this will be fun. I'm going to go ahead and kill it. Let's get everything opened up and we'll yeah, take it. Yeah, you may want to try to crank it again, make sure it's going to fire yeah, right back Yeah, I'll up. try it real quick. Kill switch works. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Oh, yeah. Works good. Like it's never been setting. That's right. Cool. Let's get her on the road.
We weren't really sure how long this old girl's been sitting, but we finally got her up and running. She seems to be purring like a kitten. Uh, we're going to move her out of the shop, send her down the road, and see what kind of looks we can get. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> it feels so weird. <laughs> it looks weird. I guess that little short wheelbase. Yeah. Every time you hit a bump, it just feels <laughs> funny. I'm not riding it back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm having a walk, I guess. Call somebody. Pretty funny we get these things running and within a couple minutes, <laughs> yeah. we put them out on the road to yeah. the test. Yeah. Go. Hopefully we see some people out and about. Yeah. Like a rocking chair. Yeah, it, it is. It's kind of <laughs> boing, boing, boing. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Rough riding. Yeah. Second gear though. Yeah. I Shift's so. good. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, it feels so Ooh. weird. <laughs> it feels like about yeah, to I roll over, over, don't it? <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, is I've seen some videos where these things will try to actually pop a wheel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to try it? <laughs> uh, uh, no, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a shot. I yeah. doubt it will. Probably get some looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> it did! It felt like it did anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to on myself. <laughs> <laughs> She's rolling pretty good. Mark the yeah. tires and everything. Yeah. yeah. I bet it probably would have went on up if it hadn't been two of us in here. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm proud of this old girl. Yeah. Like I said, we always push everything probably too soon. Right. <laughs> Only had it run an equivalent of about two minutes and put it on the road. <laughs> Trying to pop wheelies in it. It feels pretty good though, yep. driving down the road, other than feeling like a rocking chair yep, almost. Yeah, it does feel like a rocking chair for sure. It's just like boing, boing, boing. Probably just that short wheelbase. Yeah. Well, you probably <laughs> got more vehicle in front and behind the tires than you got in between yeah. them. So. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting right on top of the yep. front wheels. Yep. And fourth gear though. Yep. She's rolling, rolling along, along pretty good. About 40 miles an hour anyways. It's nice having these brakes. Yeah. It's a little easier to decide what you want to do <laughs> next. Yeah, I can get used to no, I mean, having brakes, not no brakes, yeah. <laughs> Guess we'll get her out here on the highway. That's the reason half the time I don't ride with you when you don't have any brakes, because <laughs> I'm ready to go, but not that fast. Man, she's running so good. Yeah, it's kind of hesitant whenever you were talking about buying this side unseen and that. You never know. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, you never know, but I mean, how often do you get a chance to buy, <laughs> to buy a little old shorty yeah. bus anyway? Yeah. She's a little little contrary up to speed. <laughs> she wants to road walk a little bit. Oh, yeah. Wants to own the whole road. <laughs> She's doing good. Yeah. I'm starting to say, it wouldn't look no different if you ride the wheelie than just riding around in it. I think it would get just as many looks. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe how smooth it is. Yeah. Get it out on the highway. I mean, rough little town roads is pretty bad, but out here on the highway, it's not too bad. 50 if the speedometer's right. Could you imagine making a long trip in this thing? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> It'd be pretty fun. Yeah, it would be fun. I figure I'll probably go ahead and turn around and head back. I don't want to push her too hard. <laughs> I bet it cut a good donut, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't want to try that. I don't know what's going to happen there. It's going to roll over. It'll be more like cutting a donut hole. <laughs> well, it looks like she's going to bring us back home. Yeah. You never know until you try them. That's right. Well, it looks like we made another successful victory run in them. Yep. <laughs> I hope there's not too many that we... I have to say, are unsuccessful. Oh, me too, yeah. I 
I'm so proud of this old girl. I'm excited. Yep. Let me check some stuff out, make sure everything looks good. Well, I have to say that this absolutely has to be one of my favorite revival vehicles we've done around the shop. I bought this cool bus, just sight unseen, only having some really cool pictures of what I fell in love with. Uh, once we got her back to the shop, we were able to get her up and running with just three simple issues we had to address. Uh, we had a bad starter, we had a bad ignition switch, and then just some dirty spark plugs. Uh, once we got those cleaned up, she cranked up and purred like a kitten. Uh, we were able to drive her down the road, she shifts good. Uh, heck, she'll even pull the front wheels up off the ground if you want her to. This is definitely something that's funky and fun and just right up the alley for us. Uh, so I'm sure we'll just kind of tinker with it around on the background. Definitely something you'll see around the shop for a little while. But underneath, you got something I can't describe.